So Gina has the distinction of being the last speaker before you eat. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> But she's the perfect person to do it because, as you can see, this is going to be very enthusiastic and wonderful. Uh, so. <laughs> okay, well, I know that you're all probably tired and hungry and ready for a break, so I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet and hopefully a little entertaining, I guess. Um, like many of you, I also am living with CMT. I was diagnosed at the age of 14, and I am considered a spontaneous mutation which means there's nobody else in my family that has CMT, neither of my parents. So, you know, after being diagnosed, I bebopped my, through my life. I think I still bebopped through my life. But when I hit about age 24, I found myself not knowing where to turn for answers. So I understand a lot of your concerns, your questions, your worries, and some of your frustrations. So. Us living with CMT, right off the top of your head, what are two things that we want the most? Two things that we want the most. One is when we say, I have something called charcoal marie tooth or a CMT, we want to hear that response, yes, I do know what that is. But instead, we hear, what you talking about? Because I don't even know what that is. And we want a treatment. Well, I can tell you the CMTA is doing everything that they possibly can in both of these areas. And we are very fortunate to have the CMTA. Before becoming an employee of the CMTA, I was very, very involved. Um, but not at first. I got involved by joining a local support and action group that started my, in my area. And I created some awareness by maybe some newspaper articles and, you know, I uh, participated in some awareness events at the local hospital. But it wasn't until my daughter, my youngest daughter, was diagnosed with CMT that I realized, wait a second, this is no longer about me. This is about my family yet to come, right? And this is about all families yet to come. So what I did is I dived in hard, man. I started creating as much awareness. If I could wear a sign that says that I have CMT, I will. And I hit it hard with the fundraising. And I'll tell you, it's great therapy, and it's still great therapy, knowing that I am helping the association that is helping me, my family, and all of your families. But the CMTA cannot do that alone, right? So I lost my place because I'm nervous. <laughs> um, but the CMTA cannot do that alone. And so many times folks, folks sit back and say, you know, I'm really one person. What can I do? And so they don't do anything at all. And I'm going to give you an example of what one person can do. I'm just one person, right? Pat Livney is one person and Elizabeth is just one person, but I am just one person. And before I became an employee of the CMTA, I created this school program where I go into elementary schools and I educate students about CMT and they fundraise for the CMTA. I was at a school um, for a fourth grade student and I educated about 250 students that day. And might I add, they raised $5,000 for the CMTA. Pretty awesome, right? <laughs> so um, I was at this school. I did my thing. I left. Six months later, a mother calls me. And she called to thank me for my time and my school program. Because a couple days before her calling me, she had her daughter at the neurologist. And the neurologist began to tell the mother that she had something called Charcot Marie Tooth. And the mother said, oh my goodness, what is Charcot Marie Tooth or CMT? And the daughter grabbed her hand and said, you know what, mom? There was a girl at my school. She told her all about my school program. She told her all about CMT. And she said that she was going to be fine. That is the impression that anybody can make. The neurologist about fell off the chair, right? So, um, but my point in telling you this is we all can make a difference. So I'm here today to ask you to join our team. You see these shirts that we have on? 
it's a team. We are a team. As I look through this crowd, I see so many individuals that make one mass team. So let's look at it this way. There's 2.8 million of us, right? If 2.8 million of us gave a dollar to the CMTA, da -da -da, let's add that up, right? <laughs> But if 2.8 million of us gave $5 to the CMTA, that's a latte at Starbucks, right? That's $14 million, guys. Can you imagine where the CMTA would be then? It's the same thing with educating, telling people. Because if we do not do it as individuals living with CMT, who will, right? Not our neighbor, not our family, not our employer. We have to do it. There are so many ways that you can get involved in the CMTA. Maybe awareness is your thing. Maybe you want to call me. I have cards out there. Call me. I'll send you 25, 30 what is CMT brochures to take to your doctors, to educate them, to um, pass out to your family and your friends. Maybe it's a fundraising event. Fundraising is huge for the CMTA. You can do a fundraiser. You can even do a non-event for the CMTA. A non-event, we have circle of friends at the CMTA where you can fundraise, educate, create awareness, all without leaving your home. So the possibilities are endless. And I promise you, if you call me, I will help you figure out a way to do it. September is CMT Awareness Month. You all know that, right? You're all supposed to say yes. My boss is standing right over there, and Elizabeth and I, we work on this. Yes, CM, yes, there you go. September is CMT Awareness Month. This is a perfect, perfect opportunity to get your feet wet as far as um, creating awareness. Social media, share the stuff on social media. Change your profile pic. You know, the CMTA, we have posters every year, fun, bright posters. Maybe call me, I'll send you 10. We all go to the grocery store, right? Pop one up on the billboard. That's it. Contact your governor. Ask him to proclaim September as CMT Awareness Month for your state, for your county, for your city. The possibilities are truly endless. I cannot say enough about the support and action groups. One is I get to work with the wonderful facilitators. They are one person. They are making a difference in your community. The support and action groups are a great way to stay, one, in touch with the CMTA. You get to educate. Um, and you get to meet others and hang out and talk about CMT. You know, tips and tricks on how to live. Right? We can all go to the doctors, but support groups are going to give you those tips. And I am very fortunate, I'm putting them all on the spot, <laughs> um, that we have several support groups here. Um, there are six support groups in California, two more um, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, and I would like for each one of them to maybe introduce themselves and just take just a moment on where uh, your support group is. So let's start with a uh, Steve. Hi, I'm Steve Fox, and uh, I'm the facilitator for the uh, uh, Los Angeles uh, CMTA support group. The last time I stood in a line like this, I think it was a police lineup. So <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous uh, about that. We've had uh, great meetings. Dr. Lewis has spoken at one of our meetings. Uh, Jeff uh, Smith from Allard has spoken at one of our meetings. Next one is May 17. It's in Woodland Hills. Uh, now that I know that there's 5,000 uh, patients in uh, LA with this, we're going to get a bigger place for the, uh, for the next meeting. We will have a great speaker also then, May 17, Woodland Hills. We have uh, flyers for it here. Uh, my wife is going to hold one up. Uh, my business card is there. You can also find us on the CMTA website. Uh, the support groups are really important, I think. This is great today. We are all members of the CMT tribe in one way or another. But once we leave here today, we're going to go back out in the world, and people are not going to know about our disease. They're not going to know about what we're going through. So I think it's really important to have these support group meetings where we can all be together, we can access resources, and importantly, we can help each other. Uh, 
all of the medical uh, help and all of the expertise that we're hearing about today are wonderful. But at the same time, those of us who are living with this on a day-to-day -day basis have a lot to offer each other. So please come to the group, uh, bring your uh, questions, bring your uh, experience, bring your hope, and uh, help other people with this disease. Thank you, Steve. Steve, if you can pass the, the over to Alani. Alani Price. Hi, everyone. My name is Alani. Um, I have CMT, and I also happen to work in another department at Cedars. So um, I, I noticed the new CMT clinic, and I said I, I've enjoyed going to the LA support group meetings in the past, and there weren't meetings necessarily going on until just recently. Um, so I said, I want to volunteer. I want to become a facilitator. And so I'm trying to get that set up. I'm looking at March 29th. And um, wouldn't, wouldn't be like you have to only join one. Come and join oh, this. Yeah. I'm calling it South LA because I'm trying to set it up so that we have support group meetings here. I'm trying to get the location um, down. But please check the CMTA website. website. There's going to be. Um, the location will be listed there, and I also set up a sign-up sheet on the registration table. So if you're interested in something more centrally Los Angeles, yours are in the valley, right? right. So, um, you know, come join both of us. Perfect. <laughs> Jordan Thomas. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Thomas. Uh, that sounds funny. <laughs> um, we have a group in San Diego. I believe it's been around for three years. Yeah. And uh, Laurel uh, was taking care of it, and she moved out to North Carolina, so I stepped in. Um, I'm actually new to the CMTA community. I uh, met Laurel, and she was actually the first person I met with CMT. Um, I'm 29 years old. I was diagnosed when I was 25, so I lived most of my life not knowing. I had surgeries when I was young, so there's probably a lot of people like me who grew up you know, having surgeries and having problems and you know, hadn't really no one to talk to. And uh, so the support groups can serve as a, as a team effort to, uh, you know, I'm, it's my job to tell my group members about what's going on with STAR and to see if there's anything new that I can equip them with. And um, yeah, you can find me on the CMTA website, the San Diego group facilitator. I've put my email and contact info on there. I was, my, my card's not, didn't get here. They were supposed oh, to get here in the last couple of days, but um, unfortunately, I don't have my CMTA card. You can find them on the website. But, yeah, you can Thank either you. come up to me or... Uh, Elizabeth? Oh. Yeah, he's, he's a golf pro. <laughs> Elizabeth also is, has a support group in California. Right. I uh, facilitate a CMTA <laughs> support group in Northern California, so it's in the San Francisco Bay Area. And thank you for those who came down for the conference from the San Francisco Bay Area. And I co-facilitate the group with Rick Alber. And he wasn't able to make it today. And uh, a couple of my favorite people are here, Carly Siskin, Dr. Day, and my favorite favorite is Harriet and Frank Weiss, who follow me yes, everywhere <laughs> we go. Give them a round of applause. Put your hands up. And my friend Bethany Malosh in the back, who you'll hear from um, in the near future. But we have a great group, great group of people, very dynamic. We have a core group, and we have a lot of fun. Um, Sarah Kesty will be speaking our next group on Saturday, and we really look forward to having her. So thank you all for coming. Thank you. Um, we actually have two more facilitators. We just I'm running out of time. So uh, Susan Rudiger uh, is a support and action group facilitator as well. Susan, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Susan, and I live in Atlanta, and um, I'm here, and I'm very glad about that because I'm not in the snow there. <laughs> um, I started the group six years ago for the same reason that Gina did. Um, I, I have 1A, and 18 members of my family and six generations have 1A, but it didn't matter until I had a baby girl, and then that's when it mattered, right? That's when I figured I had to do something about it. It's all for the kids. So I called Elizabeth and said, what can I do? Who do you know on the ground in Atlanta? And she said, you want to be my person on the ground in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. And I took that job six years ago and have met hundreds of people with CMT from now around the world and have had the good fortune of joining the team of the CMTA. Thank you. Um, I just want you guys to know our support and action groups often are seen as being um, 
if you've never been to a meeting, you might worry that maybe that's where people go and complain and cry and maybe get down and share that, the hard part about being disabled. And in my group in Atlanta, and I know a lot of the groups, it's all about solutions and the good side and, hey, I'm having trouble with this. Does anyone have an answer? And so it brings the community together, but you leave feeling a bigger part of something and you leave feeling more empowered to go out and live your life. Um, that's how I feel at our support group meetings, and I know that that's how our facilitators feel. So if you're nervous that you might go and go to a cry fest, um, you, you know, someone's gonna cry, but that's not the general tone of the meetings. So I would really encourage you to go and connect with others and learn um, all of the solutions that exist for you locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally. Thank you. One more, and then I gotta cut it short. Virginia? Virginia is from Vegas, and I gotta then keep it short. Hello, my name is Virginia Mamone. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. I am not a showgirl, okay? <laughs> Just saying. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's a compliment. Um, my group is about 40 something, around there, 40 seven people in my support group, um, and unfortunately we're growing. Uh, and I say unfortunately because I do not want to see any more people with CMT, but in a good way is um, I'm finding people who never knew that there was support groups out there. So they're coming to me and, um, or they're being sent to me, and um, that's very, that's, that's been very rewarding to me. Um, the same like Gina and Susan, I joined two years ago, decided to become a facilitator because I have two children who have CMT. And um, my goal is to educate as many people as I can and at the same time help um, support those who uh, feel lost, um, not knowing that there are, like I said, support groups or that there's help out there. Thank you. You know, these are one peop one in the, I said one person can make a difference. All of these individuals are making a difference in your community. And the support and action groups are just incredible. So please give them a round of applause. Thank you so much, guys. I love the CMTA facilitators. Absolutely love them. So um, I got one more. I need one more slide before I get booted off the stage. I actually have two, but I'll cut it to one. Um, you know, as I move to this next slide, and you can tell by my story, Susan's story, Elizabeth's story, Virginia's story, you know, it's about the future generations living with CMT. And I ask you to look at these smiling faces. My daughter is right smack in the middle, and there's Johan there in the corner. These kids are living with CMT. This is our future. So I ask you one more time to be part of our team. We need you. The CMTA needs you so we can help them. So let's make our dream in that treatment their reality. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gina. One more. There's my, no, I'm going to leave it at that. So thank you very much.